I'm going to start off with some letters of concern. And I read these. I've sent them to Lotus through the years. People started noticing she was not herself. And again, I'm not sure what the diagnosis is. It's not up to me to do that. I can only talk about the actions. And I would hope she'd go to an expert who could offer her some suggestions on getting well. I've offered that a number of times, rehabilitation. She agreed to go to the kids when that, I call her Lysol. When Lysol came by, she actually made a commitment. Kids have brought it up in therapy before. What a disappointment it is. She lies to the children. It's just, I don't understand how this person of great character could take this, um, is veer off into just, she's just following this cult leader who is a liar, you know, just a pathological liar, just here's what it looks like and here's what my life is. Here's a, here's a quote from, the, from Broke. So they went away to this, they went away to this uh, Australia trip and none of the money comes from anything that they're making. They actually steal money from me. The metaverse or whatever it's called. No, it was the hyperverse. It was another investment. She lied to me and told me that Brooke wasn't involved and Brooke was at the top of it. You know, they, so they ripped me off for that. I never saw the paperwork. Just so many things just stealing. And <laughs> to, for her to do that is just, it's just unfathomable. I can't say that word unfathomable if I say it slow so here's broke just this is just what she does she just unloads this diarrhea that comes out of her thinking that other people are interested and she hardly has any followers by the way unfortunately I, this guy his wife followed this whole thing. They got divorced and other people have had difficulties in their marriages because this is what she encourages to follow her in places like this. They go away to this, which was also paid for by her husband. And this was paid for by this hardworking husband. Why is that so demeaned? And why is that not honored that we honor these commitments of supplying the money for the family and why can't you be honorable in return and talk about business plans and discuss it's a partnership it's only a partnership though on their terms and legally i was remember talking to my lawyer so you sound like a misogynist i was trying to say to him hey man this doesn't seem right at, at all she can just do whatever she wants and did I went to Australia by my full support. I had no idea it would end up like this so with broke making these Instagram posts. And when I left my 20 year relationship, she does a lot of capitals. I'll tell you each capital 10 months ago, because she has to capitalize to emphasize to me, whistling in the dark. She doesn't really believe these things. She has to tell herself to believe these things. I remember with my my former wife, before with the false allegations, I said to my two older children, I said, well, the one, said, the oldest one, I said, do you really think she believes this when her head hits the pillow? Does she really believe that I did any of these things? And he said, I'll never forget, he goes, she has to. She's that far deep into it and it's brought other people into it. And I believe it's the same thing with Lotus. So deep into it, so filled with guilt and shame, even guilt and shame going back to broke if she's ever going to work something out. If she was to work something out with me, then the broke would um, disown her because you had to follow this woman who says, when I left my 20-year 20, 20 relationship 10 months ago, I was done, capital done, with partnership. I truly wanted nothing more than to explore, have my autonomy, have lots of fun sex for the first time ever. How do you think, how do you think her husband feels about that, her ex-husband now? Ever. She's never had good sex in her entire life. Why'd you get married? Why'd you have children? What were you telling him? What kind of ruse were you into? What kind of lies were you telling? And that's what happened with Lotus, with me. Make my own effing decisions and be a sovereign woman 
calling my own shots, four exclamation points. And I did exclamation point and capitalize. I had my first ever, all caps, one night stand in Australia at 48 years old. Oh my God, it was revolutionary for me. And so, capital so, capital fun, exclamation point, snuck out of the hotel room at 6 a.m. with my cloths in hand, misspelled that. Let me just tell you something. This phony is an idiot, by the way. It's not the only misspelling. She's an idiot. But she comes across as smart. I just watched a video of her. Yeah, I do my research. Stupid. And has comes up with these clever words that that's what they do. That's what the that's what these wellness grifters do. They come up with some buzzwords. She says, I saw in the movies and with the jumping up and down like a schoolgirl, so proud of my courage and ability to finally, all capitals, play five exclamation points and some emojis. Proud. Proud that she couldn't try to work harder on her relationship, which she brought two children into the world. Do it for them. Try. So it's not about you folks, it's not about selfish. Once you bring the children in, yeah, be selfish all you want if the children are involved. But they are. And what Lotus did and what this woman did is generational trauma you're causing. It's a patterning that the kids will now not think that it's important to commit to a relationship, not think that it's important to work harder and really do everything you can do rather than just this this diarrhea, diatribes that she does to justify her actions. Giving myself effing permission. She just throws, uh, you know, permission to follow. I'm not saying the word because I'm trying to be a little clean here. Follow my bliss, all capitals. No one else's rules to adhere to. Do you really? I know her husband. There are no rules. That's a lie. Just tell yourself these lies. And with the ballet, you ended up meeting an Italian who barely spoke English. It just goes on and on for our kids to read, for their peers to read and embarrass them. Does it matter to people who are selfish? Same with my ex. Doesn't care. She does these, how she copies broken, does these posts, whistling in the dark. She knows when her head hits the pillow, as I said to my oldest son when it was about his mom, she has to believe it now because she's so far in. And my hope was, I don't know if it still is, that someone intervenes and says, hey, shakes her and just goes, stop. Go back to your spiritual practice. This is not spiritual practice. She's in yoga. Of course, she's in yoga. She does breath work. She does tapping. She does all this stuff that sounds like, come on, goddesses. You know, we'll call these other goddesses and these women's groups and stuff like that. Well, I want to ask anyone that goes to these groups, what purpose are you serving? Are you serving the purpose of a whole, of a family, of all those things you committed to, to bring these people into, sign a soul contract? Is that the purpose you're signing, or, or are you just after your selfish needs? And those selfish needs have to do with you'll lie, cheat, and steal. doesn't matter. No values, no ethics. Are ethics important anymore? Are they important to anyone? I'm not saying I'm the most ethical guy in the world, the most moral guy in the world, but I'm, I, I work at it really strong. And if I get in a position, I end up apologizing or backing up or being accountable, being responsible. It doesn't exist for these egomaniacs. doesn't exist. They can't admit they're wrong. And those two are two of them. I remember one time she actually followed my path because I make a lot of amends and it's part of my life the surrendering and the ego and all that kind of stuff. I filed for divorce for my ego, one of the best things I ever did in my life. Just file. I imagine myself signing these papers. This guy did an intervention on me, another courageous guy who called me, and I answered the phone. And I just knew, for some reason, I knew that he wasn't going to praise me, which he had before. And he said, what's with your ego? And I just gulped, and he said, other people say, and I gulped again. And that some vision, some voice said to me, just file for divorce from your ego. Just let go. And 
surrender is the greatest victory. I've had it happen so many times. Every time I do this surrendering, I feel amazing. And I talk, this broke is talking about pride on acting selfishly, pride on cheating, pride on not honoring, honoring commitments, pride. That's what she says. I'm proud of myself. I took care of myself. There are other ways to take care of yourself and still be honorable. She doesn't know what it means. She just justifies it all the way. No character. These are people of bad character. My ex turned into a bad character. Just bad character. I ask her all the time. I guess I have long emails. That's why I'm guilty of that. Guilty of long text messages. I just think someday that some she's is going to go, whoa, this is a lot. I have been conned. I have been frauded. And I must go back to myself. I don't want her to return to the marriage. It's done. It's broken. It's gone. I can never trust her ever again. I do want her to have respect for me and show that to the children. I do want her to apologize so that the children see that. I want them to see an example. One time we were going to, I was, I had to, it was, it was this is when we we're pretty much new into the thing, separation, divorce, a couple years ago. And I were, I had a plan to go to Maui with uh, the kids. And she had already had her time with them. It was Christmas break. She had um, our, our two young kids. And now it was my turn. She happened to be in Maui. And on the way over, I will admit, I was in first class and the kids were in coach. I'm going to admit that right now jerk <laughs> i travel a lot long legs over six two i got to have the leg room all right so the kids have tiny legs they don't care i went back and fed them some of my first class food <laughs> but on the way to hawaii to maui i had arranged to stay at this incredible resort like a high high-end resort right on the water in uh waimea and oh, I just thought of this. The sad thing was it was blocks away from where I was married to Lotus, this beautiful wedding on the beach, barefoot in white with lays uh, with my friend Kelly doing the honor of our vows, which we wrote. And I cried. And in retrospect, she didn't cry. Maybe she was fooling me the whole time. I don't know. It just seemed like a beautiful wedding, a union. Um, some of her family was there, some weren't. I could get into a whole other thing, what happened with the family and my theories, but I'm, I'll try not to. And it really was beautiful. And just, so here, here I am, just a few blocks away at this resort with the children, but on the way, a voice came inside of me because I do have many methods and just pathways that I've taken and directions and I take direction and I listen to some and don't listen to others. And I go away from my ethereal self and divine self and go into ego and you know, all of that that comes up, anger, resentment, pissed off, it just, it just goes everywhere. I, I've said before, I'm stuck between namaste and kiss my ass. That's where I live, Philly and, and California. So this is blend. Embrace you and mace you. And huh, let you in. So on the way over, you know, I do pray, meditate, listen, conscious, all of that. I do. I'm in a mindful mindfulness group on every Sunday. That was actually the leader of that group is the one who did my intervention on, hey, and I filed for divorce. He didn't mention that, but I said, I'm going to do that. That was a voice. And then this voice happened on my way over. I'm sitting there. I turned to this mitt and my neighbor and I said, can I borrow a pen? I pulled out paper, blank paper. And I said, God, I call God and I've called big G. That's kind of what I say, big G. It's my thing. It could be Christ consciousness, whatever it is. It's just this beautiful, 
abundant, powerful, way powerful than me, way powerful than my mind. It's this essence, energy, genuine energy flow, I also call it. It just flows through me when I get out of the way, when I surrender the ego. And I said, just guide my pen. That's it. Just get out of the way. Just guide my pen. And, and what happened is a flow happened. Not one single zinger. Now, she's obviously, I've already gave you the list, and there's more. She's obviously done some wrong things, what you would call right and wrong, wrong things, some bad things, some hurtful things, some painful things for the children, for me, obviously. But that wasn't this chance to just keep on doubling down on that. She's not listening to that anyway. But what am I going to do to talk about how I'm 100% responsible for this resentment that I have? 100% responsible. Not her. I'm the one holding on. No, she can just, she'll just keep doing what she does. She probably doesn't even have any feelings. She's lost her feelings. I mean, it's just, or maybe she never had them. I don't know the answer to that, but I have feelings. And I don't want those feelings to get in the way. I don't want the children to see that. She doesn't hold the key to my prison, just like the guy that kidnapped me when I was 13. Painful experience, but I'm not going to hold on to it, which I did and led to some pretty bad times, including death, attempted suicide. Um, I remember I tried to commit suicide. I had neckties and I tied them around. I just come back from this horrible five days, took me away and uh, wouldn't let me out of this ghetto hotel room, this serial pedophile acting like a father figure. I'm thinking to myself out loud right now, geez, I have a lot of betrayal in my life. This guy, the ultimate in betrayal. And uh, I remember being in that hotel room, this, this, it just smelled like urine and it was this horrible steam radiator. I was on the floor trying to get away from him. And uh, I came back. My mom said, don't ever talk about it. So I held on to that secret. And you're only as sick as your secrets. And that's something that Lotus has. She actually told me where she's from, Japan, secrecy is a virtue. I assure you. If you can listen to me and take my suggestion or my advice, or whatever you want to call it, secrecy is the opposite of a virtue. It's toxic. You're building toxins not only for you, but for everyone around you. It's contagious. So I held on to the secret. My mom said, don't tell anyone. And that, that, was, that, was, a, that was not a good thing for me. I tried to commit suicide. I had the, a neck, these neckties, I had a noose, and I was dangling, choking, and my mom comes in. This is kind of symbolic of my life. She comes in. Oh, my God, what are you doing? Those are new neckties. Get up. <laughs> and I just got up because I was just kneeling, basically. I think part of me wanted attention. Part of me wanted to die. Part of me wanted to die so other people would regret it. I could go to my own funeral, hide behind a tree, see what they say about uh, regretting treating me in the way they did. So, yeah, these themes keep popping up. But the guy doesn't hold the key to my prison. He doesn't, he's not my warden, that guy. I completely forgive his name's Ben Rauscher. I completely forgive him for what he did. I am free. And I mean literally. There's no I have no issue talking about it. I share it also. I share just like this podcast. I share so other people have hope and other people have an understanding. You're not alone. If you're dealing with someone with who's treating you poorly or you don't understand their behavior. It becomes very puzzling and all that. I am here to let you know you're not alone. And the head is a bad neighborhood. Don't go in alone. I'm here for you. There's a lot of people here, the support groups and things like that. We're not victims either. But I would be a victim if I stayed in that space of, oh, my God, he's destroyed my life, and I'm going to continue drinking and using and all that kind of stuff, which I stopped. Crimes. Oh, my God, I committed so many crimes. Sometimes I think that's what's going on here. Any difficulties I have, my sister doesn't speak to me in years. I mean, whatever these cases are, oh, maybe it's my karma. I question this. But I also live this life of accountability, and that's what happened. I wrote this letter. I said, 
Go ahead, big G, just guide the pen. And what unfolded so naturally was a complete mea culpa, admission, apology, regrets. It just came out of me with zero zingers. I did this because that was her thing that annoyed me, by the way. Whatever the situation was, she could not apologize, and she'd always have an excuse for the behavior. Just recently, when she lied to the kids about going to Japan because she was going with her cult leader and didn't tell them that, she lied to them. She said, it was, oh, it was because of your dad. I didn't want to cause any problems. So I'm like, you know, the chaos or whatever you're calling it, it's caused by you lying. That's what she doesn't understand. The root of it is her lying, which she does constantly. The kids don't trust her anymore. I don't trust her anymore. She, she made that script. Lies like as easily as breathe. So, but this did not include that. This letter did not include that at all. It was none of that. It was my lies that I told. Everything in that letter was all had to do with what I did to bring this forth. All the mistakes I made, the lying, cheating, stealing that I did. That's what the letter contained. It was such a, it was truly a surrender, which felt victorious. And at that moment, when I finished 22 pages, handwritten, single spaced, just flew out of me of um, basically letting her off the hook too, like you've done nothing wrong. And I meant it, you've done nothing wrong. Even though she had done those things, which I will get to even more, believe it or not, there's more, this cult leader has taken her down a road of debauchery and dishonesty but let me get back to the other. <laughs> so, obviously, I'm not completely clean from the letter because some of this is still there. This frustration, this upset, this pain, sadness. It's all there. The cornucopia feelings. And they vacillate, they go back and forth. I'm free, I'm not free, I'm imprisoned. But this was truly, whew, that was a bust out of prison because at the time I was going, what the hell happened? What in the world happened? How did this happen? How did this great family suddenly break up? And um, so I landed, checked in the hotel. She was with her sister at the time. She happened to be in Maui at the same time. And I texted her. I said, uh, there'll be a letter waiting for you at the front desk of our hotel. If you're into it, we'll be at the pool. If you're not, then I let go. We're at the pool. I get a text from her. She says, I'm halfway through the first page. I'm already crying. It hit her heart. It might have hit her ego, too, because it really was about complimenting her and praising her and letting her know she did nothing wrong and saying how beautiful she is and how how I think that she's amazing and all that stuff was in there, and I meant it. And and love was in this whole letter. It was a love letter as well. It wasn't saying we need to get back together, anything like that. That's not ever the goal. The goal is I want peace between us. I want the children to have an example of how a couple should, what she called conscious uncouple, uh, conscious un whatever, the old, another term that was BS. But at this time, she then it took her like a long time to read these 22 pages. She comes, we, we get together, embrace, crying. I was crying because it really did feel like this release. Um, the kids witnessed it, it was beautiful. And we spent the rest of the time together. Went to dinners, went to, we played charades, her sister visited with her boyfriend. It was amazing. Just activities, beach, frisbee, playing, all that stuff. We just ended up together doing this on this Maui break, this Maui vacation. I mean, not the entire time together, but we were, we were together. And the kids, our son said, it was the greatest day of his life.
and this broke talks about being proud, prideful, proud, and all this stuff. It's all selfish that she's proud of. I was proud of this connection with this higher source that allowed me to get out of my ego and write this note that leveled the playing field that brought us into peace and serenity and love, divine love. Not in love, not needing sex, not wanting to be back together, but just love. That's where we're coming from. That's the game playing. That's the laughter. That's all the joy. That's what love is. And we had it. It lasted the entire time. It lasted when we came back. We went back, guess what? We went back to Agape, place where we met. There were people that we knew from the past embracing, hey, went and helped her find a, a pick, you know, helped her with a, bed, you know, getting a bed in a truck and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah. Game nights. I would have her over for game nights. This is what I want the children to see. I, this is what I want them to see is we brought you on this planet because we love one another. We don't need to be in love, but we love one another. And then it started again. She went right back to hate. When I look at her eyes, so detached, and I said before, I, it just, it feels demonic. It feels like a demonic possession. I, ca I can't attribute it to anything else, but if you could see this, this, and she puts on this phony image, like, oh, I'm so happy and free, and I tap, and I breathe, and I teach breath work, and all this stuff. Hateful. So she had already, I told you, she already had me arrested for false charges. She was the one who was violent, charged me, scratched me, pulled my clothes off, the whole deal, not off, but stretched them and everything else. And I was the one who was arrested. I'm the big white guy. And that's just the way the society is. We're all going to look at the big guy as, a, of course, I have a big mouth. I became popular, kind of semi-famous comedian. One time I was more famous than others, whatever. I'm going to be the guy, the asshole. I'm going to be the guy who's definitely the abuser. I'm the, all those things. That's what I'm going to be. And by the way, in this amends letter, I did get to the parts where it's abusive or it's uh, domineering or controlling or whatever it is. Owned it. Owning that stuff. Understanding that we're not perfect, but we are perfect. We are we are whole, we are perfect. And we don't need a guru to fill in those holes that aren't even there. We don't need someone else to verify who we are, influence who we are. This woman broke is an influencer, plain and simple. She's influenced other people to follow her and make a mob. She talks about feminine, you know, being a feminist and so forth. So there was that freedom that we had for a few weeks, and then she started. And I asked her for something. When she came over, she, she can't face me. When we're dropping off the kids, she, she stays in the car, and it's just so passive-aggressive. And I'm like, hey. And I literally walked up to her, and she told me when she had me arrested, she regretted it. I, I, I'm so sorry, you know, but in her own way. Claiming that, she, oh, I did it by accident. I, I didn't have another choice because they would have arrested me. or Whatever it was, she makes this big story up. She doesn't tell the truth that she lied and I held her phone up. I said, I'll tell you, that if you tell me the truth, I'll hand the phone back. And instead of, she went into a complete rage, a rage spiral that you, an animal. She became an animal attacking. But they're going to believe her course. So I, it was horribly painful to have that happen. A man of integrity being arrested and sitting on a slab, and it's just so humiliating. This is bright light. You can't sleep. I had COVID all night. It was just awful. They have this literally like a scummy phone. Like You have to make a call. They call the bail bondsman. It cost me $20,000 to get out of there. She just costs me so much money, and she doesn't care. She's unconscious. It's my hard work, and I don't come from anything. I never inherited a dime, literally not a dime, only debt. <laughs> so, 
And yet, and I am proud, by the way, of that, that all the children get the benefit from those things, from the sacrifices going on the road when I didn't want to be on the road and leave my family and all that. So she comes over and I said, I literally have peace signs, flashing peace signs. I said, hey, peace, I said, let's go to the Maui vibe. I kept saying, let's go to the Maui vibe, thinking I could bring her out of this rage. Oh, opposite. She pulls out her phone. I'm going to send this to the police. I'm calling the police. I'm calling the police. And she starts videoing me with peace signs. Well, there goes your regret of calling the police. She's now going to call the police with me flashing peace signs. Well, what she sees, I think, is a big giant guy coming at her. She doesn't see peace. She thinks, oh, my God, this guy's threatening me. I believe that must be what it is because she disassociates and turns into this person. I'm going, police, what? I finally walked away. And I do get intense, you know, when she does these walk away things and run away things, scratching her ears, whatever she does. It's unbelievable. And I keep going. I'll go, please stop, please stop. And I turn into this, you know, guy who's going, please, 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 come back. Stop. Stop. I'm here. I'm, it's okay. I don't think she ever, ever once, and it happened dozens and dozens of times, where she does the runaway thing and completely leaves her body, traumatized. She calls them trauma responses, but never has dealt with the trauma response, never dealt with where it came from, never dealt with healing. You know, she's been to some frauds and stuff like that. She's, uh, she literally told me, oh, they diagnosed me. They said, I'm not a narcissist. I don't need any help. That's what she said. Don't need any help but you're going to do these actions. She, I, I did a video of the kids film me in the front seat driving, talking about um, solutions. She takes that video and sends it to their therapist, compromising their therapy, our, both our children, sends it to the therapist to have me reported for child endangerment because I was talking and driving. I wasn't, I didn't have a phone. This is how far she goes. And it happened, by the way. Here we go. Child services. So I'm arrested now. Police, all, all this is child service. It's crazy time. This is due to being in a cult. Normal people don't behave in this way. And it's one after another. When I get knocks on doors, I'm assuming the worst. I'm assuming something's going to happen. It happened before with the wife before that. Police and just those kids have PTSD to this day growing up like that. And I'll do anything not to have that happen again to these two. And so far, the other ones were young and impressionable, and they really bought into that venom that would come from their mother and the resentment and the hatred that came at me, and they were affected by it. My responses, they were also affected by it. I say, please write a letter. Tell the courts what the truth is. So now they're caught in the middle. There's a caught in the middle thing that drives me crazy. Of course they're caught in the middle, but they're caught in the middle by first. It happens. It starts with, with the anger and rage being put upon dad. That's where it starts. That's in the middle. You're now, they're now in the middle of toxicity and pain and anger and angst and anxiety and cutting off and violence, they're in the middle of that. My response in having them tell the truth is not putting them in the middle. It's trying my best to get truth be told. That's what the, I was talking about when I was driving. I was trying, this is just really frustrating to be on the other side of that. I don't want to be a victim. I just want to be in a truthful space and have her get to the truth, have the children understand the truth is the most important thing, honesty, integrity, honoring your word, commitments, vows, all those things are really important. And especially if she's going to be a coach, that's what this wellness grifter community does. They all become coaches. I don't know what the hell they're, what the hell they're coaching because she has nothing to share. She never made any money. Uh, hasn't had any progress. There's no she failed marriage. She, bailed on the marriage, didn't work on it, didn't go to the right people, you know, to make it work. It's all failure. So what are you coaching? 
So my tip is, I've been advised to make tips. Uncover as much as you can, unearth, and look below the surface of what they're telling you. Anyone, peel it back. Look at them, feel their energy. If they're running, they're hiding, and they're hiding something. And many, many things were hidden from me. Many, many, many things. Too many to count. She started at the end. Another blow was, I don't know, I don't know how it happened, but she's so secretive. But somehow I got her cell phone and she let me read this text exchange. I, I don't know how it happened that she let me or she sort of, then she dove for the phone once she saw that what I was reading from this, this father, this local father, we'll call him Minio. So he is the ex-husband of one of her best friends who hates me, who believed all of the abuse. She believed it all, wouldn't talk to me at school things. And I used to say to when we were married, I go, she's so mean to me. I don't think the kids should see that either. She's copped this resentment. We'll call her Ginny. So Ginny, mean face. Oh, my God. It's like this disdain, you know, because she's believing that she's protecting her friend and she should get out and all that kind of stuff. And I guess I would do the same thing. If I assumed that what she was telling her was, was true, that I'm the abuser, so you got to get out. Better go to, anyway, she has an exchange with this guy, the ex-husband of Ginny, and he's calling her babe, and I'll protect you, get you away from him. How's it going with him? Did you get out yet? This is horrible. I'm reading this stuff. Who's he talking about? It's because that's what she presented to him. Please save me, just like I saved her. She lived in a tree house with no running water or whatever. I guess I saved her too. So she goes to someone else, plays the victim. He plays the conquering hero. And he's calling her babe. So what's this? I said to her, and she dove for the phone. She, once I started reading, I said, what's this? He's calling you babe. And saying he's going to get you a house, a protective house, a safe house. What's that? And I know one, he said, you know, and I was, it was another gut punch, this guy. I mean, he's, I played with him. I've done paintball with him. And our kids play. They have, they, we all met in baby class 14 years ago. So she has a group of those moms. They all hang out together. And I, big fan of all of them until they turned to protect their friend. I get it. I guess they're just protecting their friend because they believe what it's that this is all true. You'd think that they would ever say, "Oh my God, this beautiful lotus is a, is a liar, a pathological liar." There's no shot that they're going to believe that. This is a problem in our societies. We don't want to believe, so then we don't go into the denial and push this away and then blame and go after the person and all that. This guy went after me, acting like I was these things. And he found her a safe house. So two different times she moved into a safe house to get away. And it was like costly, these Airbnbs. I didn't know where she was. I didn't know where the house was. And then she popped back to the house again. And I'll tell you one more thing. No, I'm going to save it. Remind me <laughs> to tell you when the big blow happened. I reached out to that guy, by the way, since then. I reached out to Ginny, and I said, hey, you know, you might want to talk to her. You know, this is when it first started, and they're, they're just blame me. He goes, I never liked you, and all this kind of stuff. This is pretty nasty stuff. I don't know why, you know, what I ever did. And, you know, again, people think I have a big ego and a big, big guy and all that kind of stuff. And whatever, they make assumptions. They don't know that I'm really giving, really loving, really supportive, and that's been my whole life. That's what I do. 
They don't know that. They get an interpretation from someone else that they believe and then work from that assumption. So the tip is don't work with assumptions. Uncover as much as you possibly can. Don't put your belief in people. That's what she did. She believed in this guru type. So I'm going to get to the other story, but I am going to read you a few notes before I end this. These are unsolicited notes that I got from people on private message on Facebook. There's about 30 of them, all issuing concern. They still do. This, is, this has been going on for a couple of years now, you know, questioning what she's doing. Is she making any money with this? She does these dances and all these, all these, you know, just copy. She literally copies this woman. It's kind of, it's just sick. She copies her exact cadences and pauses and capitalizations and all that. She just copies her. And I would love you someday, if you do find out who this is, just go look for yourself. This one guy says, a living hell you're experiencing from Lotus's descent into feminazi cult she got herself sucked into. Unfortunately, there is little you can do that will cause her to snap out of it. That is sad. She's firmly in the clutches of this broke nutbag was obviously tapped into something going on inside of Lotus that made her a prime target for this sort of spiritual scam. I don't know what you are being accused of, but I do know that this woman is a full-blown narcissist just by scrolling down her Facebook page a bit. Nothing but pics of herself clearly intended to convince other women how happy she is since abandoning her family. I recall when I first became F Facebook friends with Lotus that most of her posts were a lot like this too. I didn't judge it at the time, but they seem to have a kind of a hard sell for whatever it was Lotus was trying to market, exploiting her own innate health and beauty to attract potential customers. At least that was the impression I got. So now I know where all that is coming from, and it's extremely saddening to learn that it may well mean the end of your marriage. Yes, it did. As for what to do about that, well, no amount of posting on, on um Broke's Facebook page is going to make a dent in such a person who's obviously gone over the rail. She's a cult leader. And just like, he said this, not me, by the way, he's just like Trumpists. A lot of people believe people are in the cult of Trump. She sees a completely different reality than the rest of us. I got sucked in a fundamentalist uh, thing, 13, another cult, a huge one. They prey upon young people whose parents aren't giving them the love they crave. And da 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 he talks all about that himself and this thing, and he's right. I think you have to look at your situation like this. She's been meek. Um, Lotus has been brainwashed by a cult, and you won't be able to talk the cult leader into releasing her so long as the cult has something from Lotus it strongly desires. And that is the case. She's in the downline. She's controlled. She uh, uplifts and makes posts about, the, about this narcissist leader. That's what she gets out of it. She gets the money. She gets money from the scamming that, that Lotus has done. Uh, that may just be her devotion, but in wealth generation scams, it's and that's in quotes, it's mostly cash. This is Broke's Achilles heel, and in my humble opinion, you should immediately cut Lotus off from any source of your income that she would use to continue paying tribute to this nutbag. If Broke doesn't turn her away from that, then it's about Lotus's devotion to her guru, and that's much harder to break. Many relationships are based on codependence. Normally, I stay out of such conflicts, but I wanted to share my thoughts with you as well as my support. Always remember that your life is not about your marriage, nor your kids, nor your career. It's simply about the experiences you are having as you and the rest of us meander through the duality illusion within countless levels of pretending that we are not God. This is why human life is so imperfect, because we provide the pretense of imperfection that God requires in order to understand God's infinite and timeless per perfection of being. We're the yin to God's yang, providing the required balance of the existence equation. So whatever suffering you find yourself experiencing in life, embrace it fully, because to do otherwise is to deny the only moment that ever exists and that only prolongs the suffering. As they say in 12-step programs, grant yourself the serenity to accept the things you cannot change, the courage you change, the key, what you can, and the wisdom to know the difference. 
Craig, we both know that you're on a spiritual path of realization of your God self within. We are now experiencing is just another challenge to your soul for you to rise above as you awaken to the next greater version of the greatest vision you have ever had about yourself. On higher level, yours and Lotus's souls are in agreement over what is now taking place. It is our egos which reject the eternal now whenever experience is negative. Meditate on Lotus's soul as long as you own your family, families, and remember that we are all one, pretending we are many. God bless you, my friend. I can't do much better than that. Other people talk about she's brainwashed. I can't stand that woman with the pointy nose. Someone else says that bro can be sued about making claims about helping women with trauma. She's not qualified or certified. These are all the letters that I received. I noticed that Lotus's posts are getting stranger and stranger, like it wasn't like her at all. I totally believe this woman is completely manipulated. These are all different people. Other people say I should report broke to the FBI. A lot of people reached out. You lost your marriage to a con artist. It's pretty sad. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe she's a bigger con artist than broke is. I don't know. I just know that she has no conscience left. I know I've tried and tried and tried to speak to her. I know I've tried and tried to bring people out, pay for anything for rehabilitation, which she promised the kids that she would do another broken promise, broken promise, broken promise. It doesn't matter to her. Hearing this, if she ever heard this, it wouldn't matter to her. Nothing connects to her heart anymore. Nothing. And that's just sad. The warning is there, folks. Unpeel, unpack. If somebody's pitching you something, look further. We're going to look further into this on the next episode. <laughs> I'm trying not to be too dramatic. I'm trying to laugh things, laugh about things still. And I'm having a great time in my life, by the way. Let's not feel sorry for me. Or the kids. They're having a great time, too. So, talk to you in a little bit.